wouldn't have happened if Haggai did not misbehave. Haggai was a house help. Sarah brought her into that home or Abraham brought her in for Sarah. In those days, they used to have maids or nurses. Remember Jacob and his wives? Even in our African culture, your aunt is getting married, they will say, okay, take this girl and go. So she went. And Sarah was very good to her. I'm a married woman. You think it's easy for a woman to tell you that you should come and sleep with her husband? Sarah was her helper of destiny. Sarah said to her, come. Come and sleep with daddy. Who does that? That was the highest. <laughs> Women are murmuring, you see. Even when you are hugging a woman's husband, she may pretend to be looking this way because a woman sits like an eagle. An eagle sits 360 degrees. She may pretend to be looking like this. She has eyes at the back. She's seen. Women, let's not even go there. Can you imagine what happened that day or that night when Haggai was sleeping with Abraham? Was Sarah is dropping? Was Sarah taking a walk? I don't want to imagine. I don't want to see what is happening. Was she taking a walk for fresh air? Was she parambulating? Ah, it is on me. The door is still locked. Can you imagine what happened? That was the highest thing. Can you imagine the psychological pain that Mrs. Abraham experienced? And she did that for you. Let me say this to the men too. The Bible calls Abraham the father of faith. When the wife said, come and sleep with our house help, Abraham didn't argue. Maybe the man had been eyeing the girl self. He didn't argue. <laughs> Man. Because the Bible will have written it. As a lot of time, I argued and said, don't sleep with me. Abraham didn't argue. Abraham just said, when shall we do it? When? <laughs> Men are hunters. That's why they are just their mirror. When I want to lead you to a prayer, can you imagine the pain that woman went through? And when she realized that she was pregnant, she turned against her helper. Who would have touched her guy with the longest of poles if not for Sarah? Who would have known? Hey guy, if not for Sarah, she forgot her helper. She became rude to her helper. She began to compete with her helper. She began to insult her helper. She began to oppose. There are people you must never forget in your life. no matter what you become. People that held your hand and taught you the ABCs of life, your mother, spiritual, biological, I don't care whether they become devils. There are people in my life that have helped me. They helped me at one point or another and then they changed. But I refuse to change till Jesus comes because they will reap what they sow and I will reap what I sow. There are people you must never be rude to in your life. There are people you must never forget. There are people you must never dishonor no matter what happens. That man that paid your school fees and maybe later married you. That man that helped you and now because you think you have arrived, you can begin to do anything. God is watching. 
it was so bad that Sarah showed her other side. Because every woman is a bee. Every woman produces honey and every woman can sting. This is the truth. I'm a woman. I reveal relationships. I'm an eagle. I'm a trainer. Every woman is. And some relationships may never be the same again. May you not make your helper to be angry. I just helped you to pray the first prayer points. And I thought your amen would be very loud. There are people that have been in your life and there are people that are in your life that God put there as ladders to introduce you to your new level. Please behave. We wouldn't have read this story today if she no wonder <laughs> David will always say bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not there are things you should not forget forget not I want you to raise your hand before God as you are seated father help me not to offend my helpers in the name <laughs> this may be a serious prayer for some of you this week this month this year and in case I have misbehaved, oh God, please touch the heart of my helpers. Let them forgive me in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord, to behave when I get to the palace. Help me, Lord, to behave, to remember who I should remember. Help me. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Let that amen be louder. My uncle is here this morning. I lived with him and his wife for about 10 years. Pastor John, please stand up, sir. That's my uncle. Where's your wife, sir? I will greet him on my knees till I see Jesus, no matter what I become. Except I don't meet him. I will greet him on my knees and I will tell his wife all the rice I ate in your house you cannot finish eating it till you see Jesus you may become greater than your helper remember the people that didn't allow you to die are superior to the people that allowed you to be wealthy because if you had died you wouldn't have been wealthy Treat your Sarah well. It's not easy to help. My uncle used to work for Artie Briscoe. From the little he was earning, he would buy my provision to take to secondary school. His wife would take out of their materials and sew dresses for me. Today, they don't need to pray before they eat. As long as God gives me life. They don't need, they don't need to look for what to do. Never. And they don't need to walk. They don't need to walk at all. If not that they say, ah, if I don't walk, if I don't go to the shore, they don't need to. What they will eat till Jesus comes. It's settled. Treat your helpers very well. No matter what you become. Sit down, sir. Sit down, ma. Treat them very well. Don't begin to spit through your nostrils because now you have a degree. That even the Almighty God is saying, What are you saying? Angel, what did you just say? Because you just graduated. Your mother is nothing to you again. From the black pot comes the white pap. Madam, calm down. Uncle, tread softly. Tiles can be slippery. Even if you are the one that bought it. If you are working on the tile, walk gently because the tile will forget that you bought it. And many people have fallen. Even though they look like they are still standing. This is a word for some of you today. Don't ever cut the phone on your mother. Don't ever be rude to your mother-in-law. Don't ever talk against your father. 
people that represent parents in your life come down and treat them well they may not understand why you call Lord you're here don't shout on them they may not understand why your, your hair is long like this don't shout at them you may have dresses like them but you can never have rags like them and rags speak about experience tread gently so that you can last she wouldn't have found herself in the wilderness And even God had to affirm. Abraham, send her out. She does not deserve to be in that house. Listen to Sarah. That girl is an ingrate. Even the Almighty God said that. Say number one. The second prayer point you want to pray now is this. It was not Ishmael that offended he inherited Wahala. How can a young child be in the wilderness? It was an inherited problem. It was her mother's behavior that pushed him out of the palace. And he became someone that the mother would be watching if an animal will kill. It wasn't that boy's fault. Even as we look at the scriptures later, he had inherited his mother's behavior because he was mocking Isaac when he grew up. Abraham's mistake was mocking Abraham's miracle. Mothers, be careful what you say in the presence of your children. About 37 years ago, my sister, she's there, and I, we were gossiping about one lady who were living at Obaile. That girl, I think she's pregnant. She's pregnant outside wetlock. Can you imagine? The following morning, that girl came to our house, and my four-year-old daughter ran to her, pressed her to me, and said, Auntie, is it true that you are not married and you are pregnant? Because my mother and my auntie were talking about it yesterday in our house. Since that day. Recently, our grandson, the parents said they were talking about somebody and they didn't know he was listening, five year old. And when they were done with talking about that person, our grandson said, is she that bad? Hegai inherited the mother's behavior. If you notice any negative thing in your mother's life that is showing up in your life, deal with it in prayer. And some of you, you are suffering today because of what your parents did. Inherited wahala. Inherited poverty. Inherited, stretch your hand to God. Whatever negativity I inherited from my parents, nobody can pray for you like you, so you better pray it from my mother or father or from anybody in the name of Jesus I drop it today in the presence of the Lord I will not suffer because of the sins of my parents the helpers will not use what my parents did negatively against me nobody will make me suffer for what somebody else did in the name of Jesus Christ Lord, show me your mercy. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Let your amen be born again. Amen. And finally, according to what the preacher said today, those of you young ladies that give your bodies out, the best thing they can give you is a bottle of water. And you will still abort. Each time you sleep with a man, a part of you goes irretrievably with that man. And let me tell you the truth. It is the girl that loses more. Sometimes after abortion, it takes God for you to be pregnant. Stop sleeping around. He doesn't pay you. It reduces and removes dignity from your life. 
you can't be bold really really in that marriage sometimes your husband is just calm and cool and you are thinking still remembering stop sleeping around all they can give you is excuse me Pada Abraham you were not kind how can you give that man that woman a bottle of water and bread for that journey that is what adulterers and fornicators get so when a man tells you, you are the only sugar in my tree. You see, my wife is very bad. Be careful. His wife is bad. And the marriage is 12 years. His wife is bad. They have two girls. They have three boys. His wife is bad. He got a house for you. He cannot present you publicly as missus. And you take the money to buy wig and lipstick. You're going to look at the mirror very soon and you will see wrinkles. Your biological clock is ticking. While the man is still... Men, at 70, they, they are still producing. Don't let any man waste you. It's not worth it. Abraham gave her a bottle but God gave her a well. The God of another chance. Maybe you've been very bad. You've been a bad boy. A bad girl. I had to join my son that sang. Because I remember who he was. And his mother, Benjamin, his mother gave him to Bishop and I, the mother gave up. That young man that son, the mother gave up. His life was a very bad one. Bad, as in baddest. I remember my husband, we kept the cap of cultism that we took from him when we led him to the Lord in the house for a long time. And one day we had to prayerfully burn it. And he will backslide and come again. He will go back and come again. So I, when he was singing in the choir, I remembered. And I had to join him. God is a rewriter of history. He's not the God of a second chance. He's the God of another chance. Maybe the water in your hand is already finished. God is about to give you not just a well, but a river. Stretch your two hands. Father, please turn this bottle of water into a well of water. Multiply the works of my hands. This service is for you. It's to service your destiny. Don't waste this time. Lord, I have bottles of water in my hand financially in every area. Please turn it to wells. And in case you are here, you are not yet born again, please give your heart to Jesus Christ and let him be your Lord and your Savior. Today I destroy the power of sin in your lives and I set you free to love God. Thank you, Lord, for the grace for multiplication in this service. Thank you because the bottles are becoming wells and rivers that will bring us ceaseless praise. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Give the Lord a big hand, a big hand.